Okay, so I just wanted to make a quick video um, just to follow up on the second video I was going to talk about real quickly. I know this background is all messed up. It was messed up on the last one as well, but I'm trying to film the way that you guys have asked me to, and it's not always easy. Anyway, um, a question that I've been getting a lot is, who is the artist that defrauded you out of all that money? Well... There's a prompt that says, where did you get all that money, too? And I think both of those questions are a little too intrusive. Um, and I don't ever believe on going witch hunts or, or trying to get back at people. Or like I said in the last video, that's not what we do on this channel. Um, but to give you an idea of who this person is, I admittedly have <clears throat> said who it is many times on this, on this YouTube if you go through, <clears throat> if you go through some of my older videos, I had mentioned the artist by name. Now, with that said, I have already reached out to a close friend and told them about this person, but they can't find them in any of the groups. So I'm not real sure how this artist gets commissions. Um, I'm assuming they just typically sell their full sets. And then that's it, because everybody I've talked to says they can't locate him. They can only locate their their mom, and I don't really think their mom's to blame completely in the situation. But if you are new to this channel, just to give you the lowdown, I had a BJD artist take a lot of money, and then I canceled the items that she had been paid for commissions for, and she didn't complete any of the work, but just a little bit. But the work that she did not complete, which ranged very high in money she was unwilling to refund any of it at all not even a little bit and left me in a terrible situation with basically starting all over in this hobby i am down to five dolls guys five five dolls do you want to use have 54. i've never wanted to say the number because i don't want people to think i have money because i don't and most of them were used and like older but I went from 54 to 5. And the reason why is because the artist became greedy and got used to the money and they were paid ahead of time so they had no they had no reason to not there was no incentive to complete the work is what I think happened and I said I don't want to talk about this anymore. But at the BJDC in Texas calling me and I even have Dollism in New York calling me saying talk about this because it is important to people in the hobby. Guys, I haven't slept. Look at my eyes. Like, I don't I hardly sleep ever because I'm always stressed out about the situation. Because I felt like it was happening, but I wasn't sure it was happening. And I have really know... I have friends in the hobby, but they're like me. They have issues. They have problems. And, and it's hard to, to get advice from people like that sometimes because they have their own things going on. And this had gone on for so long that I just didn't really know what was going to happen next. But basically, to sum up the situation, um, I lost a lot of money. I lost a lot of money. The artist I've named before, it's not too hard to find out who it is. But it's not going to change anything, guys. And I, and, I, and I get it. I know some of you people... Sorry, I really hate to say you people. I know some of you guys just want to know who it is because cause you don't want to commission them. I, I get that. I think that's amazing. I think that's great that you're looking out for yourself. And I look out for you as well. If nobody else in the hobby is looking out for you, they want to say, I'm a drama channel, BJD drama channel. If nobody else is looking out for you, I will look out for you. You can talk to me. Now, again, I don't know that much. I, I've, I've made that very clear that I don't have a whole lot of people in this hobby I can rely on. I don't have a whole lot of friends in this hobby. And the way to get that is to get back into a group, which is what the next video is about. But in the meantime, we have got to look out for each other. There is no mother hen in this hobby. There's not. There's nobody you can talk to. The seasoned people think they're better than us. 
that they won't even talk, just help us with small things. You know what I mean? Like they think that they're better. So whenever we have questions, they just kind of push us away and push us away. And then the new young ones are so privileged and lucky that they don't even care at all. I have met some people in this hobby that are 16 and they have half the dolls I had that I lost to the artist because she sold them for money to pay for other doll parts or commissions or whatever. So they don't understand that most people are double that age before they even have one doll. Most. Look it up. 90% of people in the BJD hobby are at least 25 before they even have their first doll. Because young people don't have that kind of money. Period. Unless they're getting it from their parents or they're borrowing it or they're charging up a credit card, they're not gonna pay. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's what hurt so much about this whole situation was that I, The dolls meant a lot to me because it was the one thing that I did for myself when I lost a really good career. And so I think the whole situation just added fuel to the fire, basically. And, and I let it go on way too long, and I, and I blame myself for that. But it doesn't mean I deserved it by any means. Nobody deserves to be defrauded. I don't care if you're my worst enemy. Nobody deserves to be defrauded. Nobody deserves to be lied to. Nobody deserves to be scammed. Nobody deserves to feel that way, ever, about anything. And um, she had made these little stuffed animals, um, doll stuffed animals, I call them. Um, and I don't even want those anymore. You know, they're, they're done, but is that going to make up for losing, you know, 40-some odd dolls or... Is that gonna change the fact that I just threw away, you know, price of a used car? Is that gonna, is that gonna give me anything for anything? Is that gonna say anything about the fact that this artist continuously put up full sets on eBay, but whenever it came to my dolls, they weren't even touched, and if they were, it wasn't very good. Does that say anything to the fact that the person who made the outfits did a horrible <laughs> cape? where they had a seam line go crisscross on the back of it for some odd reason when they could have very easily fixed it. For $75. Which, I know some artists who could do it for 25 and be good with it. So, I am bitter. I am hurting, but look at the events that happened to me. You gotta go all the way back to 2014 to do it. I lost my job, an amazing career. I got kicked out of the only BJD group I needed to be on to feel like I was a part of something. That set me back mentally and emotionally as well. Skip forward a little bit forward to that. I have no guidance, no help, no support, nobody to talk to because I can't be in these groups. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? You're gonna come at me and say, oh, you're stupid on BJD Collectacy. You did everything wrong. You should have never sent friends and family. I don't know these things. I don't know these things because nobody told them to me. Nobody told me that you shouldn't send things, friends and family on PayPal. Nobody told me about what artists are good and which ones I should go to. Nobody told me that you should never send all the dolls at once. Nobody told me that you should pay ahead of time. None of that was told to me. And look where we are now. <laughs> so, yes, I'm bitter. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm frustrated. And yes, that is the reason why you haven't seen me in a couple of weeks. Because I am trying my damnedest to recuperate. And obviously, like you can hear, it's not doing too good because I have really terrible allergies. They're coming and going, and I'm trying to find a full-time job in the process because YouTube demonetized all my videos. But let me be clear, whether or not my videos were demonetized on YouTube does not change this content. At some point, I would have posted this content regardless. The only difference is now, 
because I'm not getting paid for it, I can be a little bit more in your face, I guess you could say. I can be a little bit more, you know, just more honest about the situation because, you know, I'm not having to make a video basically for an advertiser. It's for myself. And it's very upsetting because this channel was never about me. This channel was just about my, my, my feelings and my thoughts. But it wasn't like about me. You know what I mean? I don't come on here and tell you 25 facts about me, 50 facts about me. I don't do that. I don't follow the trends that way. I make content that I think is good content. I make content that I think people in the hobby want to hear but nobody's saying. So my response directly to you guys, BJDC and Dollism. If I could go to New York, I would definitely do Dollism. Let me just say that because I think that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um... But I'm not, I don't have the means to do that this year. Um, even if I do get work soon, it's, there's no way I would be able to book a flight and a hotel and, and do that. Although it just, it does sound amazing. The BJDC for this year's already passed. It's going to be again next year. I don't know what the theme's going to be or whatnot. Um, but here's the thing. If you really want me to talk about being frauded in the hobby, I have no issue discussing it. The same way I'm talking on this camera, I can talk in front of a group of people. I like, I can come at you like I'm not scared to be in front of a crowd. I, I always wanted to be a music performer. If you didn't know that, now you do. So I have no issues talking to a group of people, giving a speech, whatever, and then taking open questions on where I made mistakes and, and stuff like that. Because I believe that communication is very important. Um, now, here's the kind of the red area, and I've, I've heard this from a few friends. The problem with talking about fraud in the BJD hobby is it can scare new people out of it. It can scare new people who have just got into it and just got their first all away. Like, they can be terrified. There are true horror stories, but I don't want people to hear them from me and then be scared. I don't want to hear, I don't want to share a story about somebody sending their doll for a face-up and then sending them back the doll with the face-up, but it's a recast. I don't want to share a story about somebody sending out their doll and then the person said they blushed it by letting it sit in the sun all day. I don't want to share a story about somebody, um, you know, ordering a wig and then not knowing that it wasn't vegan because it was, you know, an animal basically was shedded for it. Some people claim they died for it. I don't think that's all necessarily true, but... Whatever wig it was, it came from an all-natural animal. They may have no idea. They may think all wigs are fake. You know what I mean? We don't know because this community is so divided. Like, the older, advanced people do their own thing. And then the younger people do their own thing. Where is the support for the people in the middle? That's what I'm trying to find. And that's why I make these videos. And that's why I come on here and try to build a conversation and get it growing because I want you guys to know that this hobby does not need to be this way. I don't want to hear your lame excuses anymore about the hobby is not negative. It's the people in the hobby. What makes a hobby? The people. It's not brain science. <laughs> the hobby is negative. The hobby has been continued to get negative. And I thought when the whole recasting went over and it was done and built to the ground... That was it. It's continued to be negative. So don't come and tell me, oh, the hobby's not negative, it's the people. No, it's the hobby. The hobby is negative. Because it takes the people to make it what it is. I have been in the Reborn hobby. I have been in the Monster High Repaint hobby. I have been in some other doll hobbies for some of the German ones that are worth money. And I've never been taught to the way some people talk to me in this hobby. I have never been trashed on anonymous tumblers. Who even uses Tumblr anymore? <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's like an old school thing. It's weird that people still use that. Never been trashed on Tumblr by any of those people. They call me directly. I don't have to go through email with them, like some face of artists and some other people. I have to go through email with them. They won't give me their phone number, even though they have 
a $500 doll in front of them. That's mine. I'm not allowed to have their phone number. I think that's a little weird. There needs to be some kind of middle hub, some kind of middle ground, like a corporate, like something that kind of watches transactions and watches people. But it can't be DOA because DOA is anti-recast, which is drawing out people. It's pushing people out of the hobby that might only have a recast because they can't afford a real legitimate doll. But when they do have money, they may come back and want a legitimate doll. But when you push them out of the hobby completely on DOA, you're not for everyone. You're just not. You're not a welcoming place. You're just not. I'm sorry. And I, I know people don't like to hear the truth, but DOA is not a welcoming place. And, and you can find my handle and ban me. I don't care. I haven't even been on there in months. Really years. Um, so... You know what I mean? Like, why do we need to trash each other in this hobby? It's just, it's crazy. So when people come to me and they're like, I'm a BJD drama channel, I'm like, I mean, I share honest opinions, I share open thoughts, and I tell you things I'm feeling. If you feel they're dramatic, that's your perception, but it's not my intention. Anyways, I'm sorry, we went a little bit of a tangent there, but it needed to be said. But hobby is negative. I'm doing everything I can to make it less negative. The third and final video in this series will be a BJD one time. It'll be filmed the same way. I'm going to try to get more lighting and better location, though. And I'll be dressed a lot better because I think there will be more eyes on this video than all the other ones. Again, last video will have no intro, no outro. It's going to be directly to who it needs to be told to. And you are welcome to leave comments. These three videos, I will not disable comments on. And I will not um, approve them. If you write something terrible, do it. Do you know why? Do you know why I want you to write something terrible? So all of your BJD subscribers click unsubscribe, turn off notifications, and come to my channel. So if you want to leave something terrible in the comments, please do. Just gives me more people. There you go. Alright guys, hope you're having a great weekend. Thank you for watching the second videos in the series, and I will see you sometime tomorrow. I'm not really sure at what point it'll be. It may not be till Monday. Like, I mean, it'll be Sunday, but it'll be technically midnight, so it's Monday. We'll see, but I'll post it soon. Alright, bye.